You're experiencing the latest in on the water action and current information. This is the Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy, the official truck of the outdoors. Hi everybody and welcome in to this week's edition of your Southwest Outdoors Report. Hey, the weather is finally warming, the water temperatures are skyrocketing around the region and that spells good fishing for your upcoming weekend fishing trip. Last week on the show, we talked quite a bit about how good the white bass fishing is around our region and how those white bass are pushing up creeks and rivers all across our four state region on their annual springtime spawning run. On today's show, we're going to concentrate on that species, the white bass and the lures you'll need to catch them, where to locate them and the techniques that will help make you successful on your weekend fishing trip upcoming. While I'm doing that, we're taking you around the region for your very latest fishing reports from Brian Hughes in Texas Freshwater, Bill Olson along the Texas Gulf Coast, Cajun Phil and Kevin in Louisiana, both salt and freshwater, Oklahoma with Gary Dallahan, and we'll have the Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week. I'll show you one of the hottest bass fishing lakes in the state of Oklahoma. Later on, we'll have your Ask the Pro expert answers to your fishing questions and your big fish photos on the big catch of the week. So I'll get rigged up. Bass Tracker Pro Angler 16 with some white bass tackle. While I do that, we take you back to the FSN studios with your Chevy weekend plan. Thank you, Barry. The salooner tables indicate the best feeding times for game fish will take place around sunrise or sunset. The sun will come up at 7.23 and set at 7.43 in the evening. And our nights will feature a first quarter moon. Spring is here, so get out and enjoy the great outdoors this weekend. The Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy, is brought to you by Chevy, the official truck of the outdoors. Quality award-winning tracker boats, fish the finest, Lawrence, maker of the HDS, high definition systems, and Academy, right stuff, low price, every day. we go oh yeah I got something out here off the river ledge hey welcome back everybody you're on the Southwest Outdoors report today we're talking white bass spawning runs up creeks and rivers around our four state region one of the first things that'll happen when they come up these creeks and rivers is they'll hang off of the deeper drop-offs and in the deeper holes here we go up oh, darn it all right that's a decent one right there just to get it going, don't, 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 don't. Lively too. All right, that fish was laying right off the river ledge. I, I've been trying to fish shallow today already, just uh, doing a little fishing for about 30 minutes here. Have not got a bite up in that shallower water. So I pulled back off the drop off in about 10 to 12 feet of water. And there's the first white bass bite of the day. Nice little, probably a male right there. The males will move up here first. Let him go back. There he goes. Males will swim up here first, followed by the females. I hope to be able to catch some females today. And as this water warms up today, hopefully we'll get some females pushing on up. All right, we've got a start and white bass are gonna run up the creeks and rivers coming to a favorite spot near you. And we'll talk about some of the locations where you can catch those fish coming up here in just a couple of minutes. But right now, Let's go to the eastern part of our region, check on the saltwater and freshwater fishing in the state of Louisiana. Here's Cajun Phil and Kevin with Cajun Bites. Hi friends, Cajun Phil here with your Fox Louisiana Outdoor Report. I tell you what, I'm excited this week. The reason why, I'm down in Delacroix, Louisiana. But first, let me tell you about Toledo Bend. It's hot and heavy right now. If you ever want to go to Toledo, you need to go down. Right now, the bass are unbelievable. They got three to five foot of water, throw a spinner bait, throw a uh, some build flat shaft, throw a rattle trap, throw wacky worms, I don't care what, you're gonna catch bass, you're gonna catch lots of bass and some big old bass. There's been lots over 10 caught in the last two weeks. As far as the white perch goes, it's literally stupid. Throw a little tiny bass assassin, throw it underneath the popping cork, just work it there in about two foot of water over the grass. Woo, come on, funny feeling. You'll be catching lots of big old white perch. Now here's Captain Jack and Cindy to tell you about what's happening in the Delacroix area. Fishing's really good right now. Limits of speckled trout, almost all the boats are doing really well. 
most of the boats are getting back by about 10.30 in the morning. Redfish, that's a good subject too. You know, there's plenty of them. You just kind of got to work a little bit harder, work the grass lines, the points coming off the bays and stuff like that. There are plenty of beautiful redfish ranging from, you know, like this to uh, the big boys. There's one. Be bigger. Swimming under the boat. Easy. He's a little bigger. That back could be a female. Come up. Oh yeah. Try to lift that there. There we go. All right. That might be kind of a small to medium sized female right there. Got a little something working. We're not keeping them today, but let's talk just a minute about the baits that you want to use to catch these white bass. I've got three baits tied on today and I'll show you. If you keep these three baits tied on, you'll have a great chance to catch some white bass. I've got them laying in the floor right here. Starting on the left, that's a little jigging spoon. It's a small size, smaller than I use in lakes and reservoirs in case these fish are out off these deeper ledges in 10 to 12 feet of water. It works real well. The middle bait is a lipless rattling swim bait or crank bait. It's got a lot of rattles in it. It's a little small quarter ounce size. That's the size I like to use. You control that bait in these creeks and rivers as well. And then the one I just caught that fish on is a little Mo Glow head by Bobby Garland. And on the back of that is a little baby shad. It's a Bobby Garland soft plastic bait. I use that to bump along the bottom. If you'll have those three baits tied on three rods, you'll have a great opportunity to catch white bass no matter what part of our region you're fishing in. Stay with us. When we come back, Brian Hughes is up next with your Texas freshwater fishing report, the Lone Star Lakes, followed by Bill Olson. He's on the coast. The Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy, is brought to you by Abu Garcia for life. By Navionics. Enjoy Navionics anytime, anywhere. By Whataburger. Just like you like it. And by Motor Guide Trolling Motors. Got him. Can you hear that? braided line I've got on this spinning rod singing that one hit a lipless rattling crankbait welcome back everybody you're on your southwest outdoors report today oh we're white bass fishing talking about river fishing easy easy but there he comes that's a good one right there probably another male right there males first then females we did catch a female earlier and I mentioned the three baits that I like to use in that one Hit a little lipless rattling crankbait or swim bait. All right, that one goes back. And let's talk about some places where you can catch white bass. Now, last week we did a quick mention of some of the locations, including the Sabine River up above Toledo Bend, the Trinity River above Lake Livingston, the Brazos River above Possum Kingdom Lake. And by the way, I'm in the Brazos today. And then up in Oklahoma, we talked about the Cimarron River above Fort Gibson. Here are two more. They are the Colorado River system all the way up and down Central Texas, runs through several lakes, it's loaded with white bass, and the Natchez River above Lake Palestine. Really, any creek or river on the upper end of any major lake in our region that has white bass will have those whites running up to spawn in all those major creeks and rivers. Try one this coming weekend. Here's Brian Hughes with the Lone Star Lakes. Hi everybody and welcome to this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you by Real Recovery, a fellowship of fishing for men with cancer. Now this week we're going east and south. Let's start on Toledo Bend on the Texas-Louisiana border. Go up to where the river meets the lake and fish just inside the mouth for white bass. I say just inside the mouth of the river because that's where you'll catch the sandies both moving up the river to spawn and coming back returning from the spawn. Use a small spoon or the Bobby Garland soft plastics for these fish and you'll be in good shape on Toledo Bend. Now down to the south, Lake Falcon on the Texas-Mexico border. I have to mention this for bass this week, they've turned in three Cheryl Lunkers, those of course over 13 pounds in just the past couple of weeks. However, we also have to give you the warning that the tourism board has out right now. 
They are advising folks not go to Falcon Lake for spring break. That's this week's Lone Star Lakes brought to you by Real Recovery. Let's check in with Mr. Bill Olson. He's on the coast. Hi folks, Texas Outdoors Journal brings you this week's report. For the very best monthly coastal and inland fishing information, plus year-round hunting tips, check out our award-winning publication. Pick up a copy of TOJ on newsstands or subscribe securely at the website on the screen. Well, it seems the entire Texas coast has exploded with activity. Good reports have come from Sabine Lake with speckled trout working the middle and southern portion of the lake. East Galveston and East Matagorda Bays has produced good specks and reds for those wading or drifting shell and mud bottoms. Some good fish are also showing up around San Luis Pass as well as in Bastrop and Christmas Bays. On the middle coast, the area around San Antonio Bay and the lower portion of Espiritu Santos has provided consistent action for quality redfish and an ever improving trout bite. Further south, early reports of speckled trout coming from the land cut are positive signs. Look for specks from the Port Mansfield end of the cut all the way up to the mouth of Baffin Bay. Around Port Isabel, the area from Holly Beach to south of Cullen has given up fish to live shrimp or DOA shrimp fished under a mauler type float. Both ends of Long Bar are also giving up some big specks on topwater lures as well as a variety of soft plastics. This weekend, both Saturday and Sunday, have a single tide schedule of one high and one low tide each day. I'm Bill Olson, and I'll see you on the coast. Well, let's talk about water temperatures just a little bit when you're gonna try to find these white bass. They'll begin to move up the creeks and rivers when the water temperature is in the upper 50s. They'll spawn in the low 60s, and we have that in many parts of our region, especially in Texas right now, not in Oklahoma. So what you'll wanna do is watch your surface temp readings. You can see right there on my Lowrance Elite 5 DSI unit, this water temperature is about 66. So we should have some females up in shallow water spawning. When the water temperature gets there, you want to be fishing shallow right up against the bank and pulling it back towards you and they'll be real aggressive. The cooler the water temps are, the further you want to back off the shoreline. All right, stay with us. When we come back, I'll have your Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week, your tip on where to catch fish this coming weekend. The Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy, is brought to you by Academy. Right stuff, low price, every day. Nitro Performance Bass Boats. Fish your best in a nitro. Coast at Del Mar Sunglasses. See what's out there. And Chevy, the official truck of the outdoors. Ooh, that's a better fish. I can't get him up. Here he comes. Good white bass. Big old female. Open up. All right, look at there. There is what happens when the big females start moving up. Welcome back, everybody. You're on your Southwest Outdoors report today. That one hit a little Bobby Garland, baby shad. And there we go. White bass are moving up creeks and rivers all across our region. And man, they are a blast to catch. You can bring the kids out, let them go back. And I want to show you very quickly how to work this bait. If you want to bump this one along, especially when these fish get up next to the bank and start spawning like that one was getting ready to do, you want to cast up there shallow. Don't let it go all the way to the bottom. Start it back on an easy, smooth, medium retrieve. And as it works its way back deeper, start lowering your rod tip, letting that bait drop down a little bit deeper working on out here in the open water. But you want to keep casting it up shallow. That way if a big female, big fat one with eggs like that, is moving up there on that shallow ledge, that shallow sandbank up in front of us to spawn, you can catch it again up there. Keep it moving while it's shallow or you'll get it snagged. Slow, steady retrieve and use your reel handle to control the depth and the speed of that lure. Let's check in right now with my friend Gary Dallahan up in Oklahoma. He says there's a lot of good fishing in the Sooner State. 
Hey anglers, I hope you paid a lot of attention to Barry's show last week because what he described is exactly what is happening in Oklahoma at this time. Above our major lakes, up in the main river sections, or up in the main feeder creeks coming into the lakes, the white bass are moving in there starting their staging run. Ran into guy Michael Thompson between Hudson and Fort Gibson Lake. He tells me they're catching some good numbers of really big white bass in there already and those are just going to continue to move in the more as the water and the weather continues to warm. Got the same report from Ivan Martin over at Grand. He was fishing below the dam, reported a lot of two, two and a half, even a few three pound white bass. Both guys were throwing lead heads with a soft plastic body behind it. We all like the straighter for that because of the kicking swimming tail. The slab slayer is another good choice, as is the shad wrap crankbait and a lipless vibrating bait like a rattle trap. If you're fishing in a tail race below a dam or in any area that's got a lot of current right now, be especially careful navigating that boat through there. You can get in trouble in a hurry. The same thing if you're wading or fishing from the shoreline. Be careful of the water. Largemouth bass are still being caught in the backs of the creeks. That's going to keep getting better as well. Square boat crankbaits, soft plastics, and also spinner baits. One thing about it, you can't catch them if you don't go. Hey, it's time now for this week's Lawrence Hot Lake of the Week. My hot tip on where you can catch some fish this coming weekend. And the tip this week is on smallmouth, largemouth, and spotted bass at 10 Killer Lake up in northeastern Oklahoma. Now, a lot of that water up in Oklahoma froze over solid this winter, but once it thawed, the fishing has been nothing short of fantastic. So let's locate 10 Killer Ferry Reservoir east of Muskogee, Oklahoma on the Lawrence HDS-10. The water temperature at 10 Killer is now in the lower 50s and the bass are in the pre-spawn stage and actively feeding. We switch over next to the Navionics Hot Maps Platinum Chart with the satellite photo overlay option turned on. It's a beautiful shot. And for orientation purposes, we locate State Highway 82, the bridge crossing the upper end of the lake here. Now during the spring, you want to concentrate your fishing on the major creeks like these. We zoom in again and tell you that the largemouth, smallies, and spots are all migrating up these major creek channels in search of shallow spawning water along the shorelines and the backs of the small pockets and ditches. You'll need to fish slowly with the jig and experiment with different depths to locate these bass getting ready to spawn. Now, I will tell you that the reports from last weekend up at Ten Killer were fantastic for all three species. If you live in that part of the state, get up there and get you some. Stay with us. When we come back, we'll have your Ask the Pro expert answers to your fishing questions. We'll have your Whataburger Big Catch of the Week, your Big Fish photos, and this week's Academy Right Stuff. The Southwest Outdoors Report, powered by Chevy, is brought to you by Strin, the standard of dependability, by Gene LaRue Lures and Bobby Garland Baits, quality soft plastic baits made in Oklahoma with American pride. By Chevy, the official truck of the outdoors, and Mercury Marine. Welcome back everyone, it's time for our Ask the Pro feature. Our question this week is from Monty in Fort Worth who asks, when it is spring and the pressure from fishermen is on, what is the best lure to use? For the answer, let's check in with last year's runner-up for Angler of the Year, Edwin Evers. All right, guys, the question is springtime. There's lots of fishermen. Everybody's out there fishing. What is the best lure? I have found, for the most part, you know, if it's muddy water or something like that, a lot of people are throwing spinnerbaits. I try to find something different, maybe slow my presentation down by flipping. Uh, if we're down there on Rayburn or something and everybody's throwing lipless crankbaits, Try to figure out something different, maybe go to a spinnerbait. I just try to do something a little bit different than everybody else is. But if you're gonna sit here and hammer me, make me narrow it down to one bait, it'd have to be a spinnerbait for the springtime. Thanks, Edwin. If you have a question for one of the pros, just visit our website at southwestoutdoorsreport.com. Click on the Strin Ask the Pro link and send us your information. Now here's Barry with our Whataburger Big Catch of the Week. One more time back out at the river talking about white bass fishing. Just a moment, we'll get you caught up on the tackle. But first, this week's big catch of the week winner is Ray Cates of Texarkana, Texas. And get this, he is shown here with a fantastic 12.28 pound largemouth bass, a brand new lake record up at Wright-Patman Lake in northeast Texas, not far 
from Texarkana. Congratulations to Ray. If you'd like to send in your big fish photo for our contest, go to our website at southwestoutdoorsreport.com. You'll go to the members only area and once you're there, you can do lots of things, including send us your big catch of the week photo and your ask the pro question for our experts. Now for this week's Academy Right Stuff feature, the right tackle for white bass fishing in the spring. Two rigs, one a little heavier action, Abu Garcia Verdict Rod with a bigger spinning reel and the new Strand Sonic Braid Clear Blue Fluorescent Line. On your right and my left is a little lighter rod setup. It's a Fenwick HMX rod with a smaller reel, eight pound test, Strin original line again in clear blue fluorescent. That's the two rods and reels you'll need. Earlier, I showed you the lures, a small spoon, a lipless rattling crankbait in a small size, and a little Bobby Garland baby shad plastic bait on a Moglo head. Well, I hope you have fun out there this coming weekend chasing those white bass. They're prolific all around our region, and I promise you there are white bass going on a springtime spawning run up a creek or river somewhere within a half hour of your house. Look it up, take the kids, have some fun, and we'll see you right back here next week. Next Thursday night, our show will be on at a special time period. Make special note, we'll be on Thursday night 8.30 p.m. right before the Dallas Stars San Jose Sharks hockey game. And we'll be on in our normal time Saturday morning at 8 o'clock. And you can always watch the latest episode 24-7 on the front page of our website. So from the Brazos River, we'll see you then. I'm Barry Stokes. Be safe. Have fun. Bye-bye, y'all.